Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to the webinar today. I'm Katie Raleigh, the, the host from the NOAA Central Library. We're very happy to um, host this webinar today. Um, this webinar is sponsored by Patrick, who's with the Southeast Fisheries Regional Office. And I'm going to let Patrick take it away to introduce um, Eduardo and his, uh, his work. Thank you. OK. All right. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, it gives me me a great pleasure to introduce the speaker for today's brown bag, um, Eduardo Cuevas, researcher at the Universidad Autónoma del Carmen Campeche, Mexico. Um, his presentation will be on sea turtles, including challenges to their conservation. A number number of years ago, um, before I started with NOAA Fisheries, I did some consulting work with Traffic, which is a um, wildlife trade monitoring network that is a joint program of uh, the World Wildlife Fund and International Union for Conservation of Nature. And we um, did a study on, on the exploitation, trade, and management of marine turtles in the Northern Caribbean. And I had the honor of meeting Vicente Guzman, one of the uh, co-authors of this presentation. Um, he was kind enough to share his expert knowledge of sea turtles of, of the Yucatan and was very helpful with our study of what was going on in the Yucatan. We kept in touch through the years, and he recently approached me explaining the problems still, that problems still exist uh, existed in the Yucatan. Um, we decided that this presentation could contribute to getting the word out regarding what is going on there now. Uh, Eduardo is going to assess the conservation needs of the Isla Arena Celestun. Um, as you will learn, sea turtles are highly migratory. We are trying to conserve the same species as Mexico, and a comprehensive, comprehensive international collaborative approach is essential to sea turtle conservation. Uh, we greatly appreciate him doing this brown bag and thank him, Vicente, Maria, Abigail, and Melania for their efforts on the behalf of sea turtles. And with that, I'll turn it over to Eduardo. Hi, good morning. Thank you, Patrick, uh, for, for this invitation and all, all the help that we, you have gave to, given to us. And we are, as, as Patrick mentioned, we want to, to bring to you some uh, particular information uh, in the in the region of we are calling a hot spot for sea turtles in Isla Arena and Celestun located at, well we're going to, to show the location of this area and we in we plan to show you why we are considering this a hot spot there is already some information out there uh, about this area and one of the main concerns that we have for this same region as Patrick said, we there we are a, a, some uh, there is a group of researchers working on this region, and a few of us put together this presentation. But there is another a, a larger group of of collaborators and colleagues. Let me go to the next one. Okay. As I mentioned before, the, the objective is to contextualize the relevance of these multi-species sea turtle aggregations in, located at the northwest coast, coast of the Yucatan Peninsula. And to bring to you some ideas and some information to jointly design an integral strategy, an action plan to address capture of sea turtles in this region. Our main concern in this area is bycatch and uh, direct capture of sea turtles and we can we, we this is a we consider this area a great example of how sea turtles are connecting the north and south gulf of mexico just a brief reminder as you may know the gulf of mexico harbors five of the seven sea turtle species in the world we have uh, loggerheads green turtles leatherbacks camp ridley Hawksbills, and recently, I would say maybe five five years ago, we started to have some records of uh, Olive Ridley in the Caribbean, Mexican Caribbean. Last year, we had the opportunity to track one of those individuals moving from South uh, Quintana Roo to Cuba, and unfortunately, the the transmission stopped when crossing at the north of Cuba. But we could say that we already have some 
uh, in some occasion, we have six of the seven species of sea turtles in the Gulf of Mexico. We have been working on, on some of the habitat suitability for the five main sea turtles. As you can see, and you, this, these are some maps of the habitat suitability for these, these five species. All of them have different environmental requirements, although they overlap in some magnitude depending on the, and on the feeding habits or the area they occupy. As I mentioned before, Isla Arena is located northwest side of the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. This area is a very rich and productive by, uh, area. This is, it is called Petene Celestun Palmar. And we have a lot of, uh, we'll have a really huge mangrove forest in this area. And also one of the, well, in fact, it is the largest seagrass meadow in, in the Mexican waters in the Gulf of Mexico for all these for all these regions. So it is a very productive area with very uh, particular features that makes it uh, highly productive. We have done some uh, satellite tracking uh, studies in, in the Yucatan Peninsula. This, this, we're going to present some, some graphs, some results coming from about 100 uh, tracks for four species of the individuals of four species in the Gulf of Mexico. And what we have noticed, as you can see in this graph, is for example, Celestun and Petenes, the bars with the red stars. Those are the areas that we are talking about, and they are the ones that have the, the highest, no, the largest number of individuals coming from different from different nesting beaches. For example, for Petenes, we have about two, four, six, eight different uh, origin. The, the, we have individuals coming from eight different locations. And for Celestun, we have a similar number. In comparison to the other areas, uh, those these two uh, particular regions are the, have the largest number of, of uh, different origins of the of the speed of the individuals the one that says este cabo catoche is the opposite corner of the yucatan peninsula it is uh, on the northeast corner of the yucatan peninsula and it has some pretty similar uh, biological and oceanographic conditions as petenes and celestun does do sorry for the, those for, for those gra that graph was for uh, green turtles and for hawksbills, as we were saying, it is not that attractive because of they are mainly seagrasses. However, they do have some. We have some evidence of some individuals coming from South Campeche to the, this same area. Using also uh, using this about 100 tracks, satellite tracks, we did this this uh, simple analysis where we are showing the area of Petenes and Celestun that we have the connectivity or the connect the linkage with different regions inside the Gulf of Mexico to the Caribbean and even to uh, Florida Keys, and having some of the areas with the highest number of individuals. The another corner that I was commenting is Cabo Catoche is this one where we also have very important uh, feeding area for green turtles in the rain. As I commented also earlier is there is another uh, there is quite a good uh, set of evidence in uh, published in papers for example, the Shaver and Hart uh, uh, collaborators have documented the movements of Camps Ridley's and loggerheads coming from North Gulf of Mexico to, to this same region. And also Blumenthal and collaborators showing green turtles moving from Gran Cayman to Mexico to this area of Isla Arena. And also uh, one green turtle moving from Cuba to Isla Arena. So this is, uh, part of the evidence that is showing from from another group of researchers 
showing that uh, hotspot of Isla Arena for different species. Recently, just last month, we had the opportunity to deploy two additional satellite tags to individuals captured in that foraging area of Isla Arena. Those were GPS fast log tags donated by the White Lab computers. Those are the, the individuals. They were two green turtle, uh, they were adult females in that region. And this set of points is some of the preliminary, preliminary results. Those are the GPS points in the region. As you can see, here we have Isla Arena. This is Celestun. And we have in this area, it is known as, locally known as Cambalan. And it has the influence of the waters of the coastal lagoon here and some uh, sources of fresh water coming from inland in this region. All this, all this sound is covered by seagrasses mainly. I will show you some photographs. And the turtles seem to, 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 to stay there. This is the second individu in, individual, the second female that we are tracking now. And in these areas, you can find, for example, last when we were doing this deployment, this deployment we could uh, record about maybe 12 to 15 uh, sea turtles in just 10 minutes, uh, looking for in, in, in the same spot. Going from juveniles to adults, we have also tracked some uh, green turtle males in this area. So it is a very, very important and, and rich area for the, uh, for the Yucatan Peninsula. These are some photos. Well, they, as you can see, it is now the clear waters of the Caribbean, but we have a pretty nice and uh, healthy seagrass meadows in those areas. We have been working on, uh, well, we are, we're starting to doing some assessments of how the herbivory of the green turtles are influencing the dynamics of the seagrass meadows as it has been reported for other, for other uh, seagrass meadows in the world. And we are interested in how, how the herbivory is influencing the blue carbon dynamics in this region. So this is another uh, another point or theme of importance for this for this same song. Getting the, all those uh, 100 tracks, we could identify this this we could get this information in the map on the upper left. We have in the red polygon the area of Celestun and, and Isla Arena. And as you can see, we have some of the highest densities of post nests in situ females of four of the four species, uh, loggerheads, green turtles, hawksbills, and Kent Ridley. But it is also used as a migratory corridor for, for the four species. And as you can see in the map at the bottom, one of the few red points that we can find in this map is inside this this region of Isla Arena Celestun. Those red points or, or spots are where we recorded the four species occurring at the same time in the region. So it is it is one of the few spots where we we could uh, register the four species with this set of of satellite tracks. Unfortunately, this region faces several threats of high concern, and two of the, the concerns that we have, and as Patrick commented, is bycatch and a illegal take of individuals. It, this, these maps were uh, published in 2018, last year, and they were we were assessing the bycatch uh, interaction or the potential uh, bycatch for sea turtles in the Yucatan Peninsula uh, by artisanal fleet. 
And as you can see in the black and white map, we have some of the highest uh, capture per unit effort of uh, using gill nets in this region. And in the, the map at the bottom, we have the interaction of the potential interaction of crossing the fishing, fishing effort with the location of the home ranges and aggregations of the sea turtles. And Celestun and the area of Petenes, because we have some data of the of occurrence of sea turtles there, was identified as one of the hotspots for bycatch in the in the Yucatan Peninsula. Also, Vicente in 2005 to 2012 started to do some bycatch assessment doing some interviews in different ports of Campeche. This is the west coast of the Yucatan Peninsula. He and his team did more than 300 interviews in nine localities in Campeche. What he found is that uh, Isla Arena is the one that catches the most of the turtles in the past decades, as you can see in this purple bar, with the percent of interviewees saying that they do consume sea turtles. The gillnet type, most of the, one, one of the, well, the, the most dangerous uh, uh, fishing gear is what we is the one that they use for fishing ray and sharks that we call rayera is this one the the largest one this in in well in, this fishing gear well this uh, gill net is forbidden for most of the ports here in mexico there are just a few persons we are talking about for example in isla arena they were commenting us the only three persons have the permit for using this, this uh, fishing gear. However, there are a lot of more uh, persons using it illegally for direct intake of the sea turtles in this, in this area. Once again, uh, in this graph, we can see the percent of bycatch per, per locality and Isla Arena is the highest one, well, uh, closely followed by Isla del Carmen, but Isla, Isla Arena stands as the, uh, as the one with the highest percent of bycatch in, in, in the West Coast. Vicente also had the opportunity to get some information regarding the percent of consumption of why they are consuming the sea turtles and the, in Isla Arena and also at Celestun is the same, the same case. They are mainly consuming the meat and eggs of the turtles because of customs. And it is represent, well, and, and they mostly capture uh, in Isla Arena, as we could expect, green turtles, because they have this large spot. Although they consider that uh, loggerheads are the most tasty uh, species, but they don't find it easily. They do find easy, easier, they, the green turtles are easier to find in this, this region. So they have a pretty good uh, structure of how they consume and why they consume the, the, the turtles. They do have a good uh, knowledge of how to differentiate the, the species so this information is is pretty pretty confident because they have do they have done this this uh, this consumption for decades and generations. The, when they are consuming the sea turtles, they are mainly consuming it on, in Easter week, as you can see in Isla Arena, and most of the products or the the meat that they get from from the illegal bycatch, uh, well, illegal capture, it is not for local consumption, but they send it to another communities inland. So there is a market, there is an, an inland market for these products. So it is 
uh, the problem is a little uh, bigger than just an than just an island, but it is also including another uh, neighboring communities in in this west region of the peninsula. Once again, in another way to to show this hotspot, Isla Arena is one of the uh, largest hotspots for uh, illegal capture and bycatch and in Campeche. And in Yucatan, it was Celestun was considered along with Cisal, that is another community in the same region, in the same west corner of the peninsula, with the highest rates of bycatch of sea turtles in, in the peninsula. As Patrick said, uh, we have we have all we have had also some discussion with colleagues doing this satellite tracks and this kind of uh, spatial ecology analysis. North and South Gulf of Mexico is connected by by sea turtles. U United States and Mexico share the conservation management of these migratory species. And the Yucatan Peninsula harbors really important feeding and residency spots for endangered and critically endangered species in the Gulf of Mexico and, the, and even the Caribbean. So we consider that it is uh, uh, an opportunity, of course, and a responsibility to work together how to get all the available information and efforts to protect these this migratory species. Our goal is to create and transfer the best information supporting options to solve identified threats to decision makers. Right now, uh, as once again, our main concern is illegal, uh, illegal, in, uh, illegal take and the bycatch. There have been some efforts working with the local community, particularly, particularly at this arena, but they have been, we consider that they haven't had the consistency and the long-term vision of working with the community and working working with the fishers to have to to strongly uh, how do we how the I say to strongly have a, a a result of of the change in their habits and their uh, their talks regarding sea turtles. As you may may have, we were we have a, a list of proposals and, and ideas that we consider that they are feasible to to start with, and we divided them in the short term and mid term and even long term. But we have some different some of the different uh, proposals are to working on. Uh, validating and updating the, the data and direct take the commerce of products and subproducts and the assessment of bycatch and consumption in this area. Of course, an outreach campaign and environmental education is, is strategic and key for this, this problem, this threat. We think that having a plan for encouraging encouraging alternative economic activities could be a, a good idea. We know that it is not easy to do. Uh, we have been working in another communities, uh, for example, Holbosch, and most most of the fishers say, say that they don't want to continue fishing because it is not, as you, you know, it is not a, a profitable uh, livelihood anymore. But they don't know what else they can do. So we are betting that maybe that could be a good opportunity. Maybe it is not a, it is, well, we know that it is not going to solve all the problems, but we think that it could be a good start. Of course, to design a plan for public usage of this region, because they also have tourists coming to this area to bird watching and going to the mangroves and some uh, springs. And in the midterm, to evaluate the feasibility of this adventure tourism, trying to do another, to, to, to promote alternate, this alternative uh, livelihood, 
they are inside a biosphere reserve. It is a federal natural protected area. So they're, they have this, the advantages and some disadvantages of doing all this work in this area. To implement those alternative livelihoods, we are, we are, in, we are preparing some meetings with uh, federal and state authorities to, to do this pretty same uh, presentation and looking for alternatives and options uh, for, for this area to work on this official formal uh, environmental education pro program for schools. And of course, we have to, to, to keep our long-term in-water sea turtle monitoring and tracking so we can have uh, uh, strong data and, uh, for, for measuring all this, this any, for measuring the effects of, of any of these strategies that we implement. Uh, we want to bring you, uh, once again, we wanted to bring you this information, looking for recommendations, looking to, for proposals and ideas of how we can uh, work together and how to bring the attention to this area. There are, again, there are already available information from different groups from the U.S. and we have some information that we already presented and uh, some other information that we are just we are still preparing for the the South Gulf of Mexico using satellite tracking. So we consider that we already have enough information for uh, implement designing and implementing a binational or even trinational, including Cuba, trinational uh, efforts for sea turtles. There are some some uh, there have been some uh, I don't know if well. Uh, starts or ideas and strategies such as the international uh, uh, strategy for sea turtles that the Hart Institute has promoted in last years. But we think that we have, we still have the task of making it operative and taking it out from the papers to, to implement it in, on, on, the, on the field. And of course, it takes a lot of, of work and a lot of resources, human resources, material resources. But we think that we could start doing some of those ideas and start implementing them in this platform that is of interest for, for at least the three, the three uh, nations in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, we want to thank you all for your time and interest. Uh, I am include in my email and I can contact you with any of our colleagues if you want to, and we are open for any suggestion and questions. And once again, thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much, Eduardo. Um, that was a wonderful presentation. I'm gonna open it up to our online audience. Does um, anyone have any questions? If you do, uh, please put them in the question panel and I can um, read them out for Eduardo. I'm gonna give you all a minute to think. Um, Patrick, hey, well, do you have anything you want to say? Yeah, I mean, while people, while people are maybe thinking of a question or two, maybe um, I don't know if, if Eduardo uh, could maybe briefly just to, uh, explain a little bit um, regarding um, sort of like the structure of you know where he works and you know who's doing what, and maybe a little bit of of some of your partners that you're working with because you've got some people that are working. Um, at, at least one with a, uh, as, as I understand it, a, a nonprofit organization that might be interesting just to hear a little bit of that. Okay, okay, but um, well, regarding the structure of the stakeholders, let's say, well, uh, as I mentioned, is Laren and Celestun is, uh, is, is they, they are in the federal natural protected areas. There are two reserves there. Uh, the Biosphere Reserve of Ria Celestun and the Biosphere Reserve Los Petenes. They are together in that area. And so those are, as you as you know, those that uh, condition gives some opportunities and restrictions. In Campeche, there are uh, there is a state committee of for sea turtle conservation in which there is federal, state, um, municipality uh, authorities, 
the academics, NGOs, working, all of them working on sea turtle conservation. In particular, in Isla Arena, uh, we have, well, Vicente started working in that region with the bycatch and the consume and evaluating the consuming and the traffic of products and subproducts of hawksbills mainly. But it came out in that in Isla Arena, the, the, the species of their, interest is, of their interest are loggerheads and green turtles. But they have, as, as they, are an, they are an island, they are isolated and in several ways it is complicated to, it might be complicated to get, to get inside the community. They are fishers, their, their main livelihood is, is fishery, are fisheries. And as they are in the front, state frontier between Yucatan and Campeche, there, ha, there are historical uh, problems regarding fishing in that area. So if that could be an opportunity because federal authorities of fisheries in Mexico, they know about the the some of the problems or um, of the use of illegal fishing gears in that area. So there are a lot of a lot of uh, stakeholders and components configuring that 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 threat of direct uh, direct uh, capture and bycatch of sea tortoises. Uh, right now. The, we have been working with uh, from the academics doing this satellite tracking, and I can say that it is mainly the it is the main effort or the main uh, project that is running in this area. Isla Arena is also a nesting a nesting beach for hawksbills in 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 this part. There is a local group that is on uh, that is in charge of. Uh, patrolling and doing the biological monitoring of the nesting beach, but so far there uh, there is not any research going on or uh, another kind of efforts uh, to to tackle this problem, and that is what we want to to I don't know if it's to solve but to attend, uh, working on getting some resources for. Uh, all these, some of these uh, ideas and proposals that we presented at the end. Thank you. Thanks, Eduardo. Um, we do have one question from online so far, and uh, it's basically to clarify about the, the consumption of the sea turtle. Um, the question was, are they primarily green turtles? And if so, does this mostly include juveniles or does that include adult? adult species of the species okay well thank you that is well uh, that is interesting because um yes the main species that the species that, that they mainly consume is green turtles and we are well we are assuming and they have commented to us that is because they that is it is a species that is most abundant in that area they do consume uh, juveniles and adults. Uh, what we have here is that they consume adults mainly because that is the, the life stage that is easy, it is most commonly captured with these shark and ray uh, gillnets. But uh, for example, and they were saying that one individual, they can send one, sell uh, one individual, if I'm not wrong, in about 100 or 150 US dollars for one individual of those species. And they also used to consume uh, juveniles because it is easier to, to hide a few kilograms of, of meat than a huge uh, adult individual. Uh, and they also like, well, Vicente was commenting to me that is they, they also consider that it is uh, more, it is uh, juicier, or how do you say it is juicier uh, meat from uh, the, the meat from the juveniles than the meat of the, of the adults 
uh, individuals. They do they 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 do recognize a difference in the taste of the juveniles and the adults also. Awesome, great. Uh, we do have one more uh, question from online. Have you considered developing value-added marine algae like seaweed products as an alternative economic activity for fishermen? Um, no, we haven't. Well, we haven't uh, done that. We haven't had that idea in the radar. Thank you very much. That is part of the the the, the feedback that it, it is really helpful for us. There is there is there are some efforts in the Yucatan, well, in the north coast of the Yucatan, doing these uh, uh, cultivs or uh, cult, uh, cultivating this macroalgae. So far, I, I think that there haven't been any effort in in this arena. But thank you very much. That is a good one that we could add. Great. I am not seeing any more questions online. Oh. Actually, never mind. One just came in. Uh, uh, here's the question: How would long-term monitoring initiatives be implemented, and who would be hired to do that work? Okay. Well, as you may know, the any long-term strategy is a, a really huge challenge, and my our experience is that we we build it as as time goes on. What we have done in another areas is that we have a core group of researchers researchers leading the the investigation and then how do we how do we work at the area well we include uh, students for example now we are uh, we're about to to have a master degree student that could be going to that area for in water uh, monitoring so how to to keep this long term long term monitoring is a really huge challenge i don't have the the answer to that but well the specific answer but what we think that it, it we we know and we have had experience that it is feasible and how it well if i remember well how it could help this uh, long long term monitoring is to have uh, for example in nesting beaches, we have uh, proved uh, that the present, the the only present is with just the presence of the researchers and people working on conservation for this species. It is it is a, a first step to the the trend, the to avoid the to to provoke an avoidance of the illegal activity. So we think that having a regular uh, presence in that area could start. It could be a good start helping to to diminish the the, the at least the direct capture. Great. Um, I myself have a question. Um, are there any? Uh, are there? areas around the world where they are doing this type of um, sea turtle conservation that you guys have uh, looked to for for ideas or that could um, that could give you um, some hints on what where to go next with this yes of course there well for in in, in mexico uh, for example in veracruz the aquarium of veracruz they have a, a pretty nice example of how they are working with uh, with the fishers and documenting evaluating and doing all the research and the outreach with the local fishers regarding bycatch so it is it has been pretty it had it is pretty impressive how they have the, the, the results they already have for example they have we have been monitoring with them some uh, individuals that they have been captured at least four four times in the same spot in the same year by different fishers. So it talks about the residence of the turtles and the consistency of the participation of the fishers in that area. 
of course, the, all the, the experience that the Grupo Tortuguero in Baja California that has been working for more than, I think, one decade or two decades working with Fisher, with, with Fishers. So we think that the, uh, once again, a key, key aspect is to have the consistent presence and the regular presence uh, in, that, in those communities. It takes uh, several years to, to start having some of the best results, but we have to start and we are trying to, to, to solve the problem of that irregular, irregular uh, presence in, in, in Isla Arena. But for sure, there are several uh, examples of success in Mexico and in other parts of the world. Thank you so much for answering that. Um, I don't have any more questions online. Is there any last thing um, Patrick or you, Eduardo, want, would like to say um, before we close this out? Um, yeah, I mean, I just want to say thank you very much again to uh, Eduardo, Vicente, uh, uh, Mary, Abigail, and Melania for, for all the effort they put into this and um, for doing the presentation. Thank you very, very much. Awesome. Okay. Well, I'm going to give everybody back uh, 20 minutes of their day. Thank you guys so much. And this presentation will be, um, we have recorded it. It will be up on the library's um, YouTube channel. And um, thank you guys for coming. Thank you.